This video discusses the halting problem. We know that computational problems can be hard. Solving some of the hardest problems may take a long time. But given powerful hardware and plenty of time, in principle, every computational problem can be solved, right? It turns out that the answer is no. There are indeed problems which are so difficult that they cannot be solved. There are many such unsolvable computational problems, but the most famous one is the halting problem. The halting problem wants to decide whether a finite piece of programming code terminates when given a certain input or whether it runs forever. In other words, does the program eventually return or does it have an infinite loop somewhere from which it never returns? For many programs, this can be answered easily. A classic hello world program for instance just writes hello world and then immediately halts. This program here is already a bit more difficult. Does it halt? Please pause the video and think about it for a second. Whether this program halts depends on its input. If the input x is zero or negative, the program halts. For strictly positive inputs x, however, the program does not halt. It should be possible to write a fancy program which takes the text of this program and its input x as input, and then outputs whether the program halts. But what about a program that decides for every program input combination whether they halt? That's the halting program we are looking for. It takes as input the text of another program, and then some input, and then it does something fancy, and eventually it returns either true or false, true if the input program halts, and false if it does not. But can such a halting program exist? Let's assume that a correct halting program exists, without worrying too much about the details of how it works. Instead, we do a thought experiment. Let's write a little test program, which calls the halting program as a subroutine. And now let's do something really meta, let's just run our test program, but with itself as input. Every program, also the test program can be seen as a piece of text, and let's call the test program text, tau. Now we run test on tau. What happens? Think about this for a minute. Well, it's complicated. When we call the test program, then the first thing test does is to call the halting program. In particular, test calls halting with the inputs tau and tau. If the halting program fulfills its promise then it must return with either true or false. Let's assume that it returns true. This means that the test program will halt. However, when we look at our program code, this is not true at all. If halting returns true, then the test program will go to the next line and loop forever. In other words, the halting program is giving an incorrect answer. What about the other case? If halting returns false, the test program promptly halts. So the halting program is again incorrect. We have a logical contradiction to our assumption that such a halting program can exist. So the halting problem is a truly undecidable problem. One may argue that at least one side of the halting problem could be easy to solve. A halting program can simply simulate any program, and if the simulated program eventually halts, the halting program will output true. The problem of this simulation approach are only programs that do not halt, since also the simulation of such programs will not halt. This motivates a weaker kind of decidability that is only required to work in one of the two cases. We say that a problem is semi-decidable if there exists a program that correctly answers true in finite time. If the answer was false, then the program either outputs false or keeps running indefinitely. Or vice versa. As such, our halting problem is undecidable, but also semi-decidable. Because of its definition, each decidable problem is also semi-decidable. But only some undecidable problems are semi-decidable. There exist many other problems that are undecidable. Many close relatives of the halting problem are undecidable. For instance, does a program ever output a given string? Or does a program halt on any possible input? These can be shown to be undecidable with simple reductions to the halting problem or with slightly different test environments. In summary, in this video we introduced the halting problem, which goes back to Alan Turing. The halting problem has a central place when it comes to undecidability. Many incomputability results are shown through a reduction that comes either directly or indirectly from the halting problem. 
A very similar line of thought also appeared in the work of Kurt Gödel, who was studying incompleteness theorems at about the same time. The general message of these two results has caused a shock in the scientific community, where the general belief formed by David Hilbert was that every well-defined question can be answered. The halting problem shows that this is not the case, which has far-reaching philosophical consequences. Thanks for watching this video.